Can you imagine being woken up in the middle of the night to bright flashlights shining in your eyes? This is what happened to Mildred and Richard Loving. When Richard and Mildred Loving decided to get married on June 2, 1958, there were laws against interracial marriages in Virginia. If an interracial couple wanted to get married, they would have to leave the state and come back. During the 1950s, Virginia's law didn't allow residents of two different ethnicities to travel to other states together to avoid miscegenation laws. Miscegenation laws were laws that enforced racial segregation at the level of marriage and intimate relationships by criminalizing interracial marriage. These were not nationwide miscegenation laws. They were only in certain states, mostly in the South. People who would attempt miscegenation would not be held guilty for miscegenation, but for felony charges like adultery or fornication. An interracial marriage law said, If any white person intermarry with a colored person, or any colored person intermarry with a white person, he shall be guilty of a felony and shall be punished by confinement in a prison for not less than one nor more than five years. In 1908, Oklahoma had banned marriage between a white person and any person of African descent. During the 1920s, Louisiana banned marriage between Native Americans and African Americans. One night, when the Livings were peacefully asleep and happily married, the police barged in, blinding them with flashlights, hoping to catch them in an illegal act. They were arrested not for the act the police were hoping to catch them for, but for being an interracial married couple. The American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, was the only group willing to help the Lovings. The ACLU wanted to help the Lovings because they believed interracial marriage should be legal and people have the right to marry whoever they want. Although there were many people trying to save their marriage, there were also people who believed it wasn't right and they weren't able to be married. Chief Justice Earl Warren said there can be no doubt that restricting the freedom to marry solely because of racial classifications violates the central meaning of equal protection clause, and many people agreed. The chief also said the freedom to marry has been long recognized as one of the vital personal rights essential to the orderly pursuit of happiness by free men. But other people didn't think Mildred and Richard Loving should be able to be legally married because of Mildred Loving's skin color. Judge Basil said Almighty God created the races white, black, yellow, melee, and red, and he placed them on separate continents. And but for no interference with his arrangement, there would be no cause for such marriage. The fact that he separated the races means that he did not intend for them to mix. The Lovings and ACLU were seeking to change the laws in Virginia against discrimination against interracial marriages. This conflict took place over a decade. Inspired by the civil rights movement, Mildred Loving decided enough was enough and messaged General Robert F. Kennedy for help, which initially got the conflict in motion. Mildred Loving Jeter was born on July 22, 1939, in Central Point, Virginia. She was of Native American descent. She met Richard Loving when she was 11 and he was 17, and after living next door to each other for a few years, they fell in love. When Mildred Loving got pregnant at 18, the two decided to get married in Washington, D.C., where it was legal. Richard Loving was born on October 29, 1933, in Central Point, Virginia. When he was younger, Richard Loving had a strong passion for cars and drag racing. Interestingly, Mildred Loving was portrayed as a black woman when her mother and father were actually of Native American descent. Despite the fact that she was from a different heritage, she and Richard Loving would still have gone through the same process because marrying a Native American or anyone who was colored was also illegal. The ACLU organization worked with the Lovings to attempt a compromise with the Virginia to legalize their marriage. The ACLU gave them good lawyers, and they promised that if they were arrested, they would be released immediately. When the actual court case came around, the lawyers worked with the state of Virginia and demanded to allow the Lovings to be legally married in Virginia. The compromise began in 1967. The Supreme Court had taken the case now called Loving v. Virginia to legalize interracial marriage. The Lovings won the case and their marriage was legally approved, and interracial marriage for Virginia and 16 other states was legal. The compromise was difficult to reach because the state of Virginia tried to stop them from keeping their marriage together. But when the case went to the Supreme Court and they won the case, they were finally able to live without fear of their marriage being jeopardized. The Lovings sacrificed their anonymity to make this compromise happen, but before they spoke out against Virginia's laws, they had semi-peaceful lives. They sacrificed that for the greater good. The compromise is still current today because it prevented future conflict. Although some people were upset about interracial marriage being legalized, the compromise prevented other interracial couples from getting upset about it not being legal. 
We interviewed our history teacher and former lawyer, Ms. Shinka, to see her perspective on the topic. Here's what she had to say. After basically ignoring the issue of interracial marriage for over a hundred years since the end of the Civil War and Reconstruction, the Supreme Court decided to take the case of Loving versus Virginia in 1967. You have to understand, this wasn't just a legal conflict. It was an ethical conflict. It was a moral conflict. And above all, it was a political conflict. The Supreme Court had to decide, was the right to marry a constitutional protection that superseded the state's rights to decide that for their citizens. Okay, this is the second part. Uh, obviously, the right to marry, those exact words, are not in the Constitution anywhere. So the Supreme Court came up with a unique uh, constitutional compromise. They decided that the right to marry was under the perambula, or the umbrella, of the First Amendment. Uh, they decided the right to marry was uh, connected to and related to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. So we fast forward 50 years and the Supreme Court decides to take the case of Oberfell versus Hodges, better known as the gay marriage case. It's basically loving 2.0. It's exactly the same constitutional considerations. Does the right to marry carry its own constitutional protection? this time looking at the criteria not as skin color, but as a sexual orientation. Again, the court rules that the constitutional protections override and supersede the state's uh, right to legislate these issues. As a result of this topic, Virginia and 16 other states changed their laws and allowed interracial marriage to be legal, which was a pretty big change. I think that if this case had not happened, those 16 states would have taken way longer to change their laws. Mildred and Richard have been completely humble about what they did. Mildred said, what happened? We really didn't intend for it to happen. What we wanted, we wanted to come home. The Lovings just wanted to get married and live in peace, but them fighting for what they did helped thousands of others. It's important to teach kids all about the people that helped change the world. This conflict also connects with an important conflict that we have today, LGBTQ marriage rights. There are couples who went through the same things the Lovings did. The two cases are important because, like the Lovings, in Stonewall Inn, a gay bar, police raided the bar and arrested 13 people. The Loving versus Virginia case went to the Supreme Court, and so did a case for gay marriage rights, but it took many more years till it became a countrywide law. Discrimination laws were laws that enforced segregation at the level of marriage and intimate relationships where criminal law blah, 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 remains so today. It's a ghost. But finally, when the case went to the Supreme Court, <laughs> <laughs> but can you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> you, the ACLU organization, worked with the Lovings to attempt. <laughs>